This was a chain drive car. That looks nice and safe. You don't want to drop your hand down. <laughs> 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 Dennis to death. <laughs> he always does. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to my classic car. Well, once again, I'm out in California with my good pal, Jay Leno. Jay, you remember me, I'm Dennis, right? I don't know why it's my classic car, because none of these cars are yours. Every time I watch this show, they belong to someone else. In, in my it's mind, always, though, Jay, you should in call my welcome mind. to their classic cars. In what my mind, they're mine. All right, well, let's take a look. Uh, this is, I call this sort of the room of the giants. The room of the giants. Because everything here is big engine, aero engine. Prior to World War II, even after World War II, when you wanted to go fast, it was the ultimate hot rod. Like now, you put a Hemi engine yeah, yeah. in a small Dart, whatever it might be, or a Duster. Uh, but back before and right around World War II, airplane engines were very similar to automotive engines. They were just bigger version of automotive engines. It was the biggest thing you could get, yeah, basically, Yeah, you'd get right? two ignitions. You'd have much more cubic inch displacement uh, built at aircraft standards. So what people would do is they put airplane engines into passenger cars or build a passenger car around a huge airplane engine. Uh, one of the first cars Dennis and I did almost 20 years ago was this one. This is my Hispano Suiza. <laughs> Woo! Sounds good. It's an airplane. Now this has a 1915, 18 and a half liter Hispano Suiza aero engine in it, put in a 1915 Hispano Suiza chassis. This is a car that was never produced, but it's all Hispano Suiza. And it's a, I mean, it's a V8 engine, but right. it's like a, like a 90 degree almost, isn't it? It is, it is the first, Aero V8 engine. It was designed by Mark Burkett, a Swiss engineer. Uh, it was uh, aluminum uh, with uh, iron liners, obviously. It's got a Zenith Aero carburetor, so if you go off Mulholland, you're upside down, the engine won't stall, so it's good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good to have, yeah. But <clears throat> this is the engine that won the war in World War I. It was produced in America under the name Wright Martin. It was produced in England under Wolseley. And in France and Spain, it was Hispano Suiza, and they made 50,000 of these. Wow. And a lot of times, you'll see sprint cars with one side blocked off, and they'll run it as a big four-cylinder. Really? A, a big 700 cubic inch four-cylinder, run it in sprint cars. Yeah, but very reliable, very dependable. And usually, the engine that this engine beat was this engine here. This is a World War I. Now, this is a car called Rabbit One. This raced at Brooklands in 1921. Wow. And what this has is, <clears throat> wow. This is out of one of the big Zeppelin airships. It's a 18.8 uh, .8 liter Benz, not Mercedes. Just Benz. Benz. It's a Benz Zeppelin engine in a 1908 Mercedes chassis. That's why it says Benz Mercedes. And that the, the logo is different. The <clears throat> yeah, the logo was made up by a very famous artist named Peter Helk. He's probably the greatest American uh, automotive artist. But as you can see, it's four valve per cylinder. And you, and you could just see everything that was going oh, on. Oh, everything, everything going on. Massive Zenith carburetors Now, are these, are these oilers? I mean, they look these like are trailer oilers. cups. But these little cups, oil comes, drops in there. It's very rare that someone out uh, advanced the Germans at any point, but they were still running this big six uh, with the overhead valves, and that was an overhead cam two valve, and that, that, that made about 300 horsepower. This made about 265, 275. So these, uh, <coughs> this is your push rod, basically? Push rod right here. here. Yeah, yeah. And then you see the valves operating. Yeah, you see here. everything moving. Yeah, it kind of oil goes everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but and is that, is that aluminum? Is that's the... aluminum, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Lightweight has always been desirable, obviously. And these engines aren't nearly as heavy as you think. Now, and this was, a, this was a chain drive car? Chain drive car, yeah, here you go, right here. That looks nice and safe. You don't want to put, drop your hand down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. No, this is, uh, but this car ran at Brooklands, and uh, it runs right now. The only reason I'm not taking it out because it literally has no brakes at all. It has no. a transmission brake, and it's just, We've got another axle. We're going to put brakes on it. That's probably smart. Yeah. Was yeah. This, I mean, it's, so this is the brake that is there or this no? Is, this, is, this is one brake, and then you have a transmission brake, 
which grabs the drive shaft. Drive shaft, and we just <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and it's, 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 when it catches fire, oh, take your foot off the brake. It's the thought that counts. And is yeah. that the shifter? This is the outside shifter here. the car. Yeah, outside the car. Yeah, that was quite common. That was quite common. Uh, the, the the Hisso has it outside the car as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Now this one had a, you know kind of a fancier dash. I mean, you had the, the brass well, rings. Well, this this is a built-up car. Although okay. it uses all 1915 or that era components, it's never a car that was built back in the day. Well, this really is this, the real deal. Yeah, this ran at Brooklyn's. And the same austere, just kind of plate of aluminum. Design. Yeah, it was, it was a race car, really. That's what it was. It just meant to go around the track. Now, you remember the tank car. We did the <laughs> tank car How does before. anyone forget the tank car? The mother of all hot rods. Yeah, it's a kind of a funny. It's a, it's a little on the big side. Yeah, a little, you know, you don't even realize the scale of this thing until you get up to it. It's huge. Yeah, it's a 190-inch wheelbase, which you figure Corvette is what 98. So that's uh, it's like it's like 20 feet long. Yes, yeah, easy, easy. My gosh. But here's one that's kind of interesting. All these guys were fighting each other with their big engine. You saw the the Swiss and the American and the Hispano. Yeah. You saw the German with uh, the big Mercedes. This is the Italian contribution. This car is a 1917 Fiat with a 21.7 liter wow. uh, six cylinder motor. Figure each piston here is about the same displacement as a 327 Chevy. So you've got, <laughs> yeah, you've got overhead cam, bevel drive, very sophisticated, four valve per cylinder. And is this all, is this all brass? No. Uh, this is bronze. It's bronze, eh? Yeah, that's okay, bronze. So, so that's harder. And this here, although this looks like the plumbing and heating for an apartment yeah. building, that's your carburetor. Just massive amounts of, <laughs> massive <laughs> amounts of gasoline in here. Just literally float bowl sized carburetors here. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Now, this, this car was raced in Argentina back in the day. Uh, this one also had no brakes on it, but it used to have a big hook up here. And the idea being when the guy went off the road, the hook would catch the barbed wire to keep it from ripping his head off. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he eventually died. <laughs> it doesn't really work. He's better off having brakes. I would I, prefer I to have think, brakes. Yeah, that's a testimony. But he crashed it pretty hard. And back in, I think, uh, the mid-30s, late-30s, this plate was put on here to cover where uh, the crankcase was damaged. And then the car was rebuilt. And uh, here it is. But another chain drive, right? Another chain drive. I love chain drive. Chain drive to me is, is just the epitome of this era. I mean, that's a big honking chain, too. It is, it is. And this is? That's your brake. Such and as it is. is your transmission. And, and is it a, a three-speed or? Th uh, it's a four-speed. Four speed. It's a four-speed. So does it, does it even have a reverse? Does oh, it? Oh, it, yeah. Of course it of has course a reverse. Of course it has no brakes, but it has reverse. Of course it has reverse, yeah. Of course. <laughs> no, but it, it goes pretty good. We can take it out. You oh, want yeah. to take oh, this one no, out? This would be great. We'll take this one out. Well, let's get it ready. Let me turn on the oil. Yeah, it's just, you know. Here is your uh, fuel pump. This is your fuel pump right here. I want to get some pressure going. Now what you do is you hand pump it up. Then once the engine is running, there's a little, there's a little pump that runs off the motor that, that pushes the air into the tank. And am I looking at the flywheel right there in that That's slot? the flywheel where your foot goes right in, the, in between those teeth. Great. <laughs> OK, now Safety we first. want to, uh, there we go. Can you hear the uh, fuel gurgling in there? Oil is on. I'm not standing behind the exhaust. I don't think that's smart. Actually, it's not bad. It's not bad. OK. Set the mag. Let's see what happens. Guess that's about it. It's on. Contact. We got horn. <laughs> horn works. Okay.
Oop. This hasn't been started in about a month or two. And she so just fires up. She fires right up, yeah. <laughs> Give me another, uh... You know, tickle? Tickle. Pull those up. Yeah. Pull them up and down. Feel, feel I, fuel? I can, yeah, I can. Okay. Or you think a little cold blooded? Let's see here. Yeah, give another tickle. Try that. Kind of cool, though, huh? Oh, totally cool. Don't hit that, that's my oil switch. Got it. You can put your feet forward, you're okay. You'd have to be a ballerina to get your foot in the fire. <laughs>
until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classic on center stage with Jay Leno. Happy motoring. Woo!